All right, we're back here again with the uh, UMK3 cabinet. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what I've done since I got it last night. Um, got off work early today and kind of just tore into this today. Not really a lot needs to be done to it, but there are some things that if I was to keep it or if I was to sell it, I'd want to change out. I took the marquee apart. Um, there's two little black plastic bezels or uh, retainer clips that hold the, the uh, marquee in. And I don't know if you can see it here, but it's, it's kind of wavy like this. So um, I'm going to have to get a new marquee. I'll keep this one and put it... You know, maybe on the wall, the collection of the other ones or something like that. But um, I, it doesn't it doesn't look good to me. I don't like it. It looks kind of old and uh, it's burned on the back. So I'll be replacing that. All the T-molding all the way around. Um, I took the bezel, the plastic monitor bezel out in the glass, cleaned everything. Actually in really nice shape. I took the control panel apart and um, somebody else had drilled this. This is a piece of plexiglass, I can tell, because it's uh, a little bit different consistency and they drilled the holes all screwed up uh, and it didn't fit properly so that's going in the trash and um, one thing that, that kinda sucks about this and I'm gonna have to do is whoever applied this original, this, this looks like to be original, this uh, control panel overlay cut too short all the way around the edges and you can see the metal all the way around all the way around four edges so I'm gonna have to go and buy a new overlay um, at the Game On Graphics website. Theirs is okay. Uh, the color is off just a tad, um, but it looks pretty good when it's installed. So um, I'm going to have to do that. Obviously, I took all the buttons and joysticks off. Uh, those things were all shot. Um, and the way I do it, I'll show you guys, is I leave the joysticks together and I put them basically where they are. I put little arrows on what's up and what's down. That way I remember. And on the top of the buttons, those of you who, who have bought machines or seen the ones I've done, I mark on each one. Low kick. You now, um, if I could read my own friggin' handwriting, it looks like high punch, uh, low punch, and I just put like you know LP, high P, uh, HP, stuff like that. And then this is what the back looks like with nothing on it. Um, if you ever wanted to take off a control panel, you need to remove. There's a bunch of bolts. Um, this one here. There's usually one on here. It's gone. This one here. There's two in each side of this of this little uh, lockdown bracket. And then one, two, three, four to hold this on, and then the one underneath it five, and then the whole panel comes off. And then once you get that off, the metal piece that's on top of the wood here just comes right up. Um, you just kind of remove it, and you can get rid of these old dust washers here and replace them with the new ones. And um, then you can apply the buttons and joysticks, and you know your new Lexan and all that stuff, which I have. Um, I just have to buy the joysticks and buttons, and then I'll have to put a new piece of Lexan on there, which I already have cut over there in my shop of Lexan for every game that I have here. Um, I still haven't figured out the coin door bulbs. I'm not sure why they work and uh, why they do not work. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. I'll have to figure it out. Maybe I'll you know, uh, take each wire apart and see if it's trimmed or spliced or shorting out and um, you know, figure that out and, and uh, fix it. I put in a coin door lock on the top. The bottom one, I didn't do one because I'm going to have to paint that door over. You can see there's a big chunk of paint missing there um, you know it's in it's in good shape it's just you can obviously see that it's missing and it's a little bit rusty under there this cabin I think at one point in time got wet for a short instance of time because uh, now I'm looking at it in the daytime and if you go on the side here you can just faintly see right here a little bit of rippling of the wood um, all the way down here so either some rain or some water or something gone on it's not as significant as the other one I had uh, but it's 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 um, it's a little bit present. It stops right in this area here and then starts again up here. So maybe some water gone on. Another way you can tell with these cabinets is if you look at the top, um, you see a slight bowing effect like this. And that usually means the top panel up here got wet and uh, started to bow up. And the screws uh, tend to come apart and you can kind of see a little bit of daylight in between things. But um, it's not really that bad here. Um, I don't know if you can see it up here. It's dirty. You know, it's just the cabinet's in very nice shape. It just needs to be cleaned up. This back panel here, as you can see now in the daylight, it needs a fresh coat of paint. It's just really worn down, especially all in this area right here, like it was on its back, you know, when it was delivered. And then all the way down the side here, just kind of been abused. It's missing both of the wheels, uh, which I could order and put new ones in there. Um, I, I might actually do that now that I'm looking at it. Those, those are relatively inexpensive from Twisted Quarter. I think they're like four or five bucks a piece. Um, here's the inside of the cabinet. I cleaned it up pretty nicely. Isolation transformer, power supply, um, everything works nice. I couldn't figure out why this power supply wasn't working or why the game wasn't turning on, but 
over here in the back, that little silver button right there is an on-off switch. And I must have hit it when I was running over it with the rag, cleaning it. And I was like, what the hell? I just It turned on, everything worked, and I pressed that, and it turned right on. I put my um, MK3, not UMK3, board in here just to test all the buttons and joysticks and everything. And a couple of buttons weren't working, and I replaced them just to test them out. And um, it plays great. So, um, so far, so good with this machine. I'm not, I haven't decided if I'm going to sell it or keep it. I'm running out of room here, unfortunately, but um, you can see the side art here now in the light. It's pretty vibrant. I, I can't say there's really anything wrong with it all the way down to the bottom, except for the, the classic, you know, arcade issues, which are all along the back edges um, and the tops, you know, like over here at the corner. You, know, you always have wood missing there or scratches and, and uh, little chunks of wood missing. But overall, I mean, it's, it's as nice as the one I have inside. There's a couple of minor little marks, like right here. You know, like there's another one here, like it. you could see something scraped up against and just took a little bit of the decal off there and there. Um, and then somebody looks like they scribed their name in here and says, Baby, Baby D, whoever Baby D is, thanks for ruining this cabinet. Um, so somebody went over that with some black marker or something, and you really can't see it unless you're in the daylight. And a lot of these things with these games, you really can't see this unless you have it like in a really bright room. And um, and the light is shining right on it. So you know everybody gets all up in arms about side art being faded and and absolutely perfect. But you know when you put these in your house and you have another game next to it, you don't even look at the side art. You just look at the front of the game. So even if I have a game that the side art is like this, which is not absolutely perfect, I mean it's it's almost it's almost perfect. It's got a couple little dings and dents, and that that sort of thing doesn't bother me. So um, here's the other side. I'll just get you a better view of this side. This this side is actually in, in better shape. I don't see anything wrong at all with this side, except for, like I said, the back edge along here. You can kind of see the, the decal coming up a little bit, but that's because this machine, I can tell by looking at it, was on its back, you know, laying flat, and was probably moved this way and that way, and tore up a little bit of the back here, which is not a big deal. It's just paint, but, um, you know, when you put it on your back, you run the risk of doing that right there, which is some of the particle board coming apart and falling off. But uh, back to the side here, you can see that it's in very nice shape. Um, there's really nothing wrong with it. And I'm pretty happy with it as far as you know not needing to do anything to this machine. Here's a better close-up of the control panel in pretty nice shape. I haven't actually gotten on this side to clean it, so I can see there's just some dust and whatnot that can be cleaned. But you know, all in this area here, um, all the way up to the top, it's just very clean. And um, I kind of ran some Windex over this area here, and the white brightened right up, so it looks really nice. So that's about it. I mean, uh, you know, MK3 and Killer Instinct and, and MK2 and all these cabinets, there's not really much to it. I mean, you got the monitor, the monitor chassis right there. You got to make sure, obviously, you have your red, green, blue, ground, and sync wire, you know, correctly plugged in. And you got your PCB, your wires, power supply, isolation, transformer, and some random wires for your buttons and joysticks, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a lot to these cabinets, and, you know, when people get them, they're worried about shipping and all that stuff. If you really wanted to, you know, ship one and not have any issues, you could just disconnect the monitor and take the PCB and wrap it in bubble wrap, and that way nothing goes wrong with it. And for the most part, you know, unless the shipper drops this thing off the back edge of a truck, you're not going to have any problems with it. So um, let's go around the front. I'll turn the game on and show you that I don't have the joysticks plugged in, but we'll uh, just kind of show you that it is up and running with MK back in it. Now I got the garage door open here, so it's not going to look as bright, but it um, should be in nice shape. It's just nice to see. Now, as I said, as Mortal Kombat 3, not Ultimate Mortal Kombat, as the marquee states, but this is my own personal board for testing. Uh, but I might sell it as an MK3 if I decide to sell it, which is pretty rare. This board is pretty rare. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, like I said, overall, in pretty nice shape. I can't, can't say there's anything really significantly wrong with it. Front panel in the daylight here looks pretty good. You know, a little bit of touch up needed there. It looks like now the coin door bulbs are working. Well, no, nope, as you can see they're not. That was the sun coming through. Both of these, like I said, is not working and I can't figure it out, but I'll get on it. So anyways, there you go. You can see how perfect the monitor looks. Everything looks good. So probably another week or so I'll be completely done with this machine. I'm going to put some new Lexan buttons, joysticks, a little bit of paint on the back here and there.
try to fix those coin door bulbs and um, that's about all she wrote so I hope you enjoy I'll come back to the uh, machine after I'm completely done with it unless there's somebody that has a question about something specific and I will go from there on a side note I sold off probably I don't know a third of all these PCBs the ones that I didn't know if were working or not and um, I have all these left you can see all of them piled up here I have no way to test a lot of these because they're not JAMA and um, you know for example this is not JAMA and you can just see that, that it's a lot longer than your standard JAMA edge connector and there's no groove in it um, and then you got something like this that has no groove in it and I believe this is um, Shinobi so I need a bunch of adapters and I really don't want to spend any money doing it um, then, then you have these JAMA ones over here like 88 games which I tested with another chip from another one I have and it works great but it's missing this chip this K18 chip which I could probably burn and then these are ones that are, are working but have issues or non working at all and then those are right there all working great so um, you know it's been fun for a hundred dollars what I spent on it I've made six times what I, my original investment is um, on this and I still have all this left so even if I threw all this stuff out I'm still ahead, but it'd be stupid to throw it out because they're worth money, and you know, even like these little ROM chips right here are worth a couple bucks a piece. And um, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'll come back when, um, like I said, when I'm done with the MK3 or UMK3, whatever, decide to make this, and we'll go from there. Take care.